ears that will just scratch their itch instead of challenge them to go take a bath. Because some of our ears are itching because it's nasty. They dirty. They sweaty. They full of spiritual wax. But instead of getting a teacher that will tell you to go take a spiritual bath, no, you want somebody that will just come and pacify you. But in this world, God did not call us to be pacifists. He has called us to preach and to let this world know that there is a difference between clean and unclean. There's a difference between holy and unholy. There is a difference between right and wrong. And he says they're going to turn away their ears from truth and be turned to fables. Many more people would probably love everything about what we did if we were in here telling fables. If I was in here preaching, talking about if the flag could wave. If walls could talk. If the carpet wouldn't bend. But I don't have time for fables. I don't have time to be building stories around my imaginations, I'm just going to stick with the word. He says, but watch in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. And then verse 6, this is where all of us need to be trying to go. For I am now ready to be offered up. The time of my departure is at hand. We never know when that day is going to be. But we need to make sure that we live our lives so that whenever our time comes, we can say, even so, Lord, I'm ready. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. And henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give at that day. And not to me only, but to all of them that love his appearing. My final scripture today, I want to look at Revelation 2 and 10. Revelation 2 and 10, because the church is God's safe haven. Church is the place where we can come and get rest. Here, John the Revelator is saying, Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. And you shall have tribulation ten days. But then he says, Be thou faithful unto death. Notice he did, what he did not say. He did not say, until death. But he said, be thou faithful unto death. And if you can be faithful unto death, God promises to give you a crown of life. The word unto and the word until, they are synonyms, they are similar. But they are somewhat different. When you talk about doing something until, it means that when you get to the mark of transformation, the mark of transition, you're actually allowed to stop. You can quit because you actually did it until you got to a certain point. But when you look at that word unto, it takes on a whole different connotation. Because if you're going to be faithful unto death, that even means if you're in that church, like those precious people were on Wednesday night, 
and you see the gun pointed at your head. You can't be faithful until you see the gun. You got to be faithful on through the process. Understanding that I still serve a good God. And I'm so proud of that church. I'm so proud of the Emmanuel AME Church. Proud of the family members of those men and women that were slain. Out of all of the family members interviewed, I never heard one family member expressing any feelings of vengeance. Any feelings and desires to retaliate. And I'm here to tell you, God has taken a tragic situation. He's taken a situation that the whole world is looking at.